Hello and welcome to today's late afternoon matchup featuring Millbrook's boys varsity hockey team and Hussack. I'm Adam Beck and I'm joined today in the booth by Charlie Kay. Not only is today's game, I'm Adam Beck and I'm joined today in the booth by Charlie Kay. Not only is today's game, Millbrook's annual Pink the Ring game for cancer awareness, but the boys senior game as well. Charlie, what should we be looking for against Hussack, especially on such an important day? Well, we talk about uh, we talk about Pink the Rink is one of those days you circle on the calendar. Very important in the Millbrook athletic schedule. It's one of those games, you know, it's bigger than hockey. It's about cancer awareness and raising money for cancer research. So all the boys have that on mind, and they all want to play for something bigger than themselves today. So look out for that to be a driving force. As well, Husak is 113-1 to our 8-9-2 record, excuse me. Hussack right now is one of the worst teams in prep school hockey. So this Millbrook team, while they need to stay on their toes, they need to take advantage of early opportunities and put some pucks in the back of the net. Like Adam Beck mentioned, it is also senior night. There are a multitude of seniors on this hockey team, 11 seniors, Matt Ursini, Mac Elliott, Mike Lucy, Connor Korpanicki, Cam Lowe, Christo Walker, Jake Hugeson, Cullen Hennessy, DJ Walsh, Fabrizio Mazzarelli and Ryan D'Souza all playing in their senior game. And also, uh, I was talking to Alex Frazier before the game, and I was asked, because he is technically in the senior class, but he's, he's coming back next year, like, are you a senior for this game? He said yes. He's not up there, but um, still part of that class um, of seniors. Very important game for them. Yeah, so, you know, senior night's always a big night. You want to show up in front of the home crowd, in front of the parents, in front of the fans on your last home game for Millbrook. It's a big deal. So look for all 11 of those guys, 12 of you count Frazier, to be a big force tonight, especially looking at Christo Walker, who has been hot recently, scoring a multitude of Millbrook goals and leading this Millbrook offense. And then, I mean, you've always got DJ Walsh, too, who's just a threat every time he touches the ice. He's got so much skill, um, and he can really shoot the puck, too. So definitely Christo and, and DJ are some guys to look out for tonight. Yeah, as we're going to get some uh, senior night introductions here as we're going to turn it away to the camera and stop talking for now. The senior class of 2022 has much to be proud of, and they are a clear example of our school's motto of non city said compass, not for oneself but for all. Off the ice, these 12 seniors have represented the school and this hockey program with dignity and class. Coaches Soriento, Sibeli, and Harf would like to thank the senior class of 2022 and their families for all they have done and to emphasize that they will forever be a part of the Millbrook hockey tradition. Thank you, and we wish all of you the best of luck in your future endeavors beyond Millbrook. Now we will introduce each senior in numerical order. First, from Auburn, New York, a two-year senior defenseman, number two, Captain Cam Lowe. From Charlotte, North Carolina, a three-year senior forward, number three, Matt Elliott. From Northport, New York, a two-year senior defenseman, number four, Ryan D'Souza. Jefferson, New York, a three-year senior forward, number seven, Captain DJ Walsh. <laughs> From 
from Westchester, Pennsylvania, a two-year senior forward, number eight, Alex Frazier. From Penn Valley, Pennsylvania, a three-year senior defenseman, number nine, Captain Fab Mazzarelli. From Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, a two-year senior forward, number 14, Christo Walker. From New York, New York, a four-year senior defenseman, number 17, Matt Rossini. From Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, a one-year senior forward, number 21, Connor Corpenicki. From Schenectady, New York, a two-year senior forward, number 22, Mike Lucy. From Webster, New York, a two-year senior forward, number 23, Colin Hennessy. And from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, a three-year senior goaltender, number 33, Jake Hennessy. Thank you to the senior class of 2022. Let's play some hockey. You heard him. He, he said, let's play some hockey. We're just moments away from puck drop. In net today for Millbrook, we'll see Jake Hugeson, the starting net minor for Millbrook for most of the season. He's, he's the workhorse in there. Charlie, senior night game for him. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, Jake Hugeson, three-year senior, as Coach Soriento highlighted. Uh, he's been one of the guys, veteran team, uh, one of the veteran guys on this team. Workhorse in net, taking big majority of the starts. Look for him to be really aggressive, squaring up the shots on the top of his crease. He likes to come out, be aggressive on the crease. Really fun to watch. He should be a force tonight. And then for Husak, we'll see number 31 in white net, Trey Tompkins, the junior. Um, so fun goaltending matchup tonight. We're just moments away from puck drop. Here we go. It's going to be Christo Walker taking the faceoff dot against Gail Ezra. Or Ezra Gale, excuse me. As Millbrook will win that, and Colin Hennessy skating with some speed into the opposite zone, skates wide of the net, put that one on net, but it was padded away as Husak will lose possession of the puck in the neutral zone, and Colin Hennessy will look to work it out through his own end. Walker skating through center, finds the opposite zone, pass to DJ Walsh, shot wide of the net, tipped over to Hennessy as he'll start to get the offense rolling. Fabrizio Mazzarelli will dump that one in deep. And a loose puck in front of the net. And DJ Walsh backhand, and they score! Walsh with a backhand, and it looked like got tipped in by Colin Hennessy, Colin Hennessy on the back post to put Milberg up 1-0. Yeah, really good job by Colin Hennessy just driving to the back door of the net. Good work in front by Crystal Walker to get that initial shot. Colin Hennessy puts in the rebound. Good first goal, good way to get the period started for Milberg. 33 seconds in, we've got a goal. What a start to senior night. DJ Walsh with the assist. Christo Walker working hard on that play too, and Hennessy getting the goal. And we saw a couple games ago, uh, their last home game here, or, or two home games ago, where that line really, really had some chemistry going. So it'll be interesting to see how that continues in today's game, as Mason Alderson, the captain for Husak, will try and move that one away. Husak regains possession in their own zone. Owen Atkins lost control of that, and Millbrook will go with the heavy forecheck that Coach Soriento loves to play with. Puck behind the net. That's Hanusiak losing control of that one, and it's just been a lot of board battles here so far. Husak finds that one and gets it out of center, and D'Souza will push that puck over to his defense partner in Cam Lowe. Dan Urban tied up in center. He'll just be forced to put that one in deep with Millbrook. Once again, a lot of energy here early. Yeah, they're really moving their legs. You can hear it on the bench, too. They're yelling and screaming. It's a good start for this Millbrook hockey team. Crowds engaged. It's exactly what they need to do to start this hockey game. 
And it looks like Milberg's got the speed going here. It's going to be Papo Santana, as his teammates call him, with a nice shot on net. Milberg having a lot of offensive opportunities here. As Charlie did say in the open that, you know, this Hussack team has struggled all year. They've got one of the worst records in prep school hockey, so Milberg can definitely take advantage. Yeah, although I, I just want to highlight the word there, prep school hockey. Prep school hockey is never an unfair game. Prep school hockey is one of the highest levels of hockey at the teenage level, so you got to watch out and be on your toes still. Even a bad team can do some damage to you. Love the physicality by Mike Lucy there. And we've talked about it all year, just the strides he's made from last season, continuing to do it here, as it looks like a delayed call here, and Millbrook will go on the power play. So you just get, scored a goal 33 seconds of the game. Now you have a power play opportunity. How's Millbrook feeling right now? Uh, yeah, you're definitely feeling really good. Hot start, get a power play chance. If you can capitalize here, then you're really rolling. The crowd's going to be really engaged. Get that bench loud. So we'll see Cam Lowe and Fabrizio Mazzarelli out there as the defenseman on this power play. We'll see DJ Walsh. He's got a wicked shot, really can spray the puck, and it'll be Christo Walker and Colin Hennessy too. Uh, so that first line and, and, and Milbrook's two really – talented offensive defenseman out there on this first power play. Yeah, look out for DJ Walsh. Uh, forward, obviously, um, but he's lined up on the blue line, so he's going to play sort of a typical top of the circle looking for a draw shot from uh, pass from Cam Lowe. So look out for that shot coming in. Good clear by Sam Russo there to start the penalty kill as DJ Walsh just lost an edge there, but he regains possession of the puck. He'll skate behind the safety of his own net to try and get this power play started. Finds his teammate in Fabrizio Mazzarelli. Mazzarelli skating with some speed, getting the wheels going as he'll just dump that one in behind for Walsh. He'll get it at the point, passes it over to Lowe, back to Walsh. Walsh looking for an angle, shot. Good job there by Jimmy Jones with the block as Walsh, once again, with possession of the puck. He'll Turn it back over to Cam Lowe. Lowe looking for an option. Over to Walsh. They like to play that catching game as Husak is able to clear. Coach Savelli calling for a little bit of a change here to get that second power play unit out there. Yeah, so far so good for the Husak kill. Uh, did a good job getting in front of DJ's shot and then did a good job getting in the passing lane too. So really good job by them. Walsh lost possession and now it's two on one the other way with Husak. Looked like Panameno just lost control the puck for a second and that opportunity disintegrated but Jake Hugerson able to come up with that save. Yeah I mentioned it in the beginning when talking about Jake Hugerson you can see him right there out at the edge of the crease squaring up really well to those shots. I know that one was uh, clear with no one in front but he still came out aggressively. I really like that. So with just over 50 seconds left on the power play Milberg trying to get another opportunity here. It's going to be Walsh behind his own net, looking to move the play forward as he'll find Mike Lucy. Lucy looking for an option. He'll just skate round the boards, round the net. Finding that pass over to Urban. Urban finds the point man, and they'll just swing that one around. Dale Campbell working hard, looking for another option here as Johnny McLaughlin wrist shot eaten up by Trey Tompkins. Good goaltending both ends of the ice right now. Tompkins doing a good job squaring up as well as we just talked about with Hugeson. Uh, and also, good job by the Hussack defenseman getting out of the lane of sight of uh, Tompkins, so he's able to see that one and club it down. Milbrook wins another one here, but Ryan D'Souza, excuse me, uh, Zach Walsh lost uh, possession of that puck, but he regains it, and Milbrook's back in the offensive zone. I'm sure, I'm sure Zach Walsh will be very happy that I mistaked him for Ryan D'Souza on that play. You know, I'm sure he'd like to add it couple extra pounds of muscle there. But uh, Jake Hugeson will touch up, and Milbrook will now go back to five-on-five -five hockey. But, you know, solid power play. I think Hussack did a good job there defensively, didn't they? Yeah, they were really good on the power play. I mentioned it before. They were controlling the lanes, passing lanes, sight lines, and shooting lanes. All three did a good job getting in front of the shots and passes, and then got a good job getting out of the way so their goaltender could see. Really good penalty kill. So Cam Lowe... Hurried a little bit, but Milbrook is able to stop any potential Hussack opportunity there by tying the puck along the boards in between the skates. And looks to be free as Zachary Keshner comes away with it. D'Souza working back, trying to get the breakout game going as he'll find Keshner, who'll look to move it forward. Keshner 
A little bit of an errant pass for his line mate in Gio Panicola, and it'll be stuck in the Millbrook defensive zone, but there's the breakout pass. Got tipped in the off the zone, so no icing by Nate Rebello. And uh, I was talking to Keshner uh, today about Rebello's game. He just loved his grittiness and his ability to play on the fourth line and just be that tough, hard-nosed guy um, after every shift. Yeah, Rebello about five and a half feet tall. Not big, not the strongest guy on the ice, but probably the toughest. He takes a beating every game, gets right back up, keeps skating right back into the corner just as hard as before. A lot of respect from his teammates for that kind of play. Here goes Panicola trying to chase this puck down as Milan Bongiorno able to keep that one away from Panicola. As Husak looks to move the other way, wrist shot, saved by Jake Hugeson. Alderson working in the corner to free the puck. It's Danny Lyad with the puck now as Alderson getting hackled there in the corner. Back over to Lyad. Alderson trying to move that puck free. Gets it back to the point in Hanusiak. And that puck goes to the opposite side of the ice as Bongiorno will skate low and that puck went right through the blue paint. Really dangerous chance there, but good for Milbrook. Pusak couldn't put a stick on that. Yeah, and you notice on that last period of uh, Husak pressure there, they were using their big body, playing the body on the corners and on the wall, especially to keep that puck in the offensive zone. So 11-23 left in this first period of action. Milbrook leading 1-0 after the Cullen Hennessy goal, 33 seconds into this one, as DJ Walsh have an opportunity here, trying to go the other way. Lost control of that one, but D'Souza, or Fabrizio Mazzarelli, excuse me, is able to get that into the offensive zone. Dunham just puts that one into the center of the ice, and a little bit of a tangle across the boards, but Milbrook will come away with possession as Fabrizio Mazzarelli dangles his way around a couple Husak defenders. Colin Hennessy getting right into the middle of the ice, but loses control of that one as Husak is able to get possession now and just dump that one in deep to get the change. So it looks like Husak's gained you know, their footing in this game after giving up the early goal. What have they done to kind of settle things down? Uh, well, first of all, they just sort of found their legs after that early goal, and now they're really moving their legs and they're hard on everything. They're finishing all their hits, they're hard into the corner, and they're starting to wear down the Milberg team. Mazzarelli finds the outlet pass as that one's just dumped in deep. Nice hit along the boards by Sam Russo. It looks like Husak wants to play a little bit of a more physical game. They're slightly, you know, bigger than Millbrook. Um, but I'd say both teams are probably of comparable size. D'Souza is able to get that in the outside zone, but it looked like it skirted out back out to neutral ice. So Millbrook will have to go back as that's Johnny McLaughlin working back in his own end. D'Souza now. This time it is D'Souza. And D'Souza with that long pass to Mike Lucy. Lucy, great hustle there to get rid of the icing. It's just a fantastic opportunity. That wrist shot high and wide as John McLaughlin will try and work that one back in. and That one's whistled down. So 9.42 left here in the first period. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, Mike Lucy is one of those guys who really improved from last year. And I think one of the most noticeable differences to me between this year and last year is his speed. Last year he was definitely very physical and had a really good shot. This year he's added speed to make that a trio and it's proved very effective as we just saw and makes him a really dangerous player out on the ice. D'Souza looking to move the play forward and that one skirts back into the defensive zone so D'Souza will have to go and corral that. Trying to get away from pressure but Owen Atkins was hackling him and that puck into neutral ice. Dale Campbell now trying to get around Hanusiak is able to do so as Campbell will just feed that one down low. Hard work in behind the net and great save by Trey Tompkins time and time again. What an effort. It looked like Marco Santana was just hacking at that puck, but Tompkins was able to follow that. What did you see there, Charlie? Yeah, uh, he did a really good job staying square in his crease, didn't get offline, uh, and he was able to make two toe saves on opposite pads there. Really good work by Trey Tompkins in the net. Some fantastic goaltending by him and that last sequence. Milbrook still leads 1-0 if you're just joining us with just over nine minutes left in this first frame of action. Pagel will try and move that one across to his captain and Mason Alderson. Milbrook regains possession in the offensive zone. They're looking to move this one to Keshner as Keshner just puts that one to the opposite corner. Good hustle by Sam Renaud as he'll tie the puck along the boards. It's 
still there, but Lusak's able to move that free, but he'll call the hand pass, and we'll get a face-off here. So both teams have settled in pretty well here. It's pretty even hockey right now, though. Uh, Lusak had that advantage. I feel like Milbrook's swinging back the momentum a little bit. And I think the real difference, I mean, we talk about Lusak being a team that's struggling right now. Um, they're a team that has one of the worst records in prep school hockey, um, as, as we've mentioned a couple times. And Milbrook, I mean, they're a team that's, that's been in the thick of it all year. They're, they're, they're close to 500. I think they're just a game below 500. As that puck right out in front of the net, great A scoring opportunity, still loose, and Tompkins able to slide over to save that and plays whistle down. Fantastic opportunities there by Nate Rebello and Zachary Kescher just trying to claw away and yeah, just Gio, sticks on that puck. Yeah, Geo Panicola in there as well. That's exactly what you want to see from your fourth line. That is really good fourth line hockey right there. Grounding, grinding down low. Obviously, all three of those guys wanted that puck to end up in the back of the net. But you see them working hard in front of the net, gritty hockey. That's really what you want to see from your fourth yeah, line. Yeah, and I absolutely love talking to Geo Panicola sometimes. He's, he has a sense that he's allergic to goals. That's what he tells me. But, I mean, if he keeps hacking away like that, keeps getting himself in the right spots, he's, he's going to put one in the back of the net eventually. Yeah, you keep working like that in front of the net. Uh, Trey Tompkins, he's going to make a mistake at one point, and you're going to end up with a goal in the back of the net. Milbrook wins another face-off here. They've been pretty good in the face-off circle today as Korpanecki couldn't get his stick on that one. Outlet pass to Alderson, intercepted by the Milbrook defense, and Tompkins is able to just stick that one around his net as he couldn't quite corral it fully. Puck in along the boards in the corner, sucking the skates, and... That'll be Demoulis with possession now. He's being hounded by Santana. Korpanicki works that puck free as Milbrook will try and move that one forward. It's the bouncing puck through center, but Milbrook's able to keep possession as now it goes back to Husak as Owen Atkins just threw that one into, into the offensive zone. Cross ice pass to Renaud. Renaud getting the legs going here as he'll just dump that one in deep. Melbrook will get a partial change here. Is love to see Sam Renaud's physical play, or Sammy Sal's physical play, uh, working hard along the boards. Korpanicki with a big hit, another big hit there. Wow, just a barreling train there, as it looks like Zach Walsh was just, came, excuse me, Matt Orsini, came in flying. Yeah, something I saw for just a couple seconds, and then the play shifted after a couple big hits. Uh, when Milbrook's really moving their legs, they got some really fast guys on their squad. I mentioned Mike Lucy, also Connor Korpanicki, Sam Sal, and a multitude of other guys. If they keep moving their legs, they're going to be able to dodge a lot of these big Hussack hits and get behind the defense and really wreak havoc. So with just seven, over seven minutes left to play in this first period, Milbrook, wow. Deflection there almost went on in between the legs of Trey Tompkins, but Milbrook's got another face-off here, off to his own face-off. You know, you add a couple of these off the zone face-offs in a row and you start to build some momentum. Yeah, uh, I mean, face-offs are a decent way to build momentum. Uh, you really want some zone pressure, though. Hem in the D, keep them on the ice all at once, then you'll really build some momentum. Walsh working in behind the net. Oh, what an opportunity there. But it looked like Colin Hennessy couldn't quite put a stick on the puck, just went under his stick. Wow, another fantastic opportunity. I mean, DJ Walsh and... Oh, as Owen Atkins goes the other way, but Jake Hugenson way out of his crease to stop that one. But it looks like Hennessy and Walsh have the chemistry going. This first line's buzzing. Yeah, Hennessy and Walsh, really good friends off the ice. They're also roommates off the ice. Um, and, you know, people talk about on-ice chemistry. It also ultimately comes from some off-ice chemistry. And those two really good friends off the ice, as we can now see it influences their on-ice chemistry. They work really well together. Milbrook winning another face-off. It's about four or five in a row at this point as Atkins upended Dale Campbell. And it looks to be a whistle, but I'm not sure what it's on. Because I thought that was uh, I thought that was an interference call, but I think it's going to be on Milbrook, on Dale Campbell here. We're going to see penalty. Yeah. Dale Campbell. I don't, I, I'm very... Dale Campbell is going to the box... High sticking and cross checking, double minor. Yeah, I think he, he he said four minutes there. I yeah, we saw the four minute signal. I mean, oh no, sorry. We're gonna see coincidentals. That four was the signal. We're gonna see some four on four hockey. So coincidentals, 
high sticking and cross checking Dale Campbell and uh, Diara and Alex Alonzo Diara. So we're gonna see some four on four hockey. Sorry about the confusion. So I guess I guess I guess that's what the what what, what the four was. I because I thought we were we were seeing four minutes of two 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 minute minors, but it was for four on four. As now there's some open ice here. And uh, this is where Millbrook's speed, and I think they have had the speed advantage in today's game, especially with guys like DJ Walsh and Fabrizio Mazzarelli, some really, really good skaters. Uh, this is where they can uh, make some magic happen as Mike Lucy splits two defenders, looking for that pass, and that one's deflected back on net by Valente, but Trey Tompkins, you know, he's playing with his head on on, on his shoulders right now. He's, he's playing some really good hockey back there. Yeah, you talk about uh, Millbrook getting the favor, uh, they're being favorited in four-on-four -four hockey. I would tend to agree with you. Only if uh, if they move their legs. If they get wrapped up in hitting, then that advantage goes away. Use the extra space that's out there. Move your feet. Use your hands. Use your head. And you're going to do well four on four. And uh, Zach Walsh moving it over to Mazzarelli as uh, Milbrook will try and get the offensive breakout going. Mazzarelli, such a great stick handler. Sometimes does a little bit too much with the puck, but I mean, when he gets it going, he gets it going. It looks like Husak has an opportunity going the other way. Two on two here as Jake Hugeson baseball gloves that one as there's a little bit of an extracurriculars in behind the play. A couple shoves, a couple love taps. Everyone looks to be good. Yeah, and uh, both goalies, credit to Hugeson and Tompkins, they both look really calm in that so far. Not getting rattled, Hugeson looks confident, calm, expected to see that as he's got no goal scored on him yet, but Tompkins, Really impressed by the way he's responded to being scored on early. He's just gotten cool head, calm, collected, and he's making the saves he needs to make. He's moving really well right now in the net. As uh, We'll see more 4-on-4 four -four action here for just over a minute. Just over six minutes of time left in this first period as Korpanicki got demolished there in his own defensive end. And that's an opportunity right for tonight. What a great save by Hugeson on Demoulis. What an opportunity as Korpanicki went down. It was 4-on-3 for a moment. And Zamoulis just parked himself in front of the net. And it's a great job by Hugeson. Yeah, that save that, that was save out there. purely reactionary. You know, you don't have time to think there. He just stuck that toe out, made a great save. Cashman working hard along the boards. Zamoulis will get that one free. He was the one who just had the opportunity there for Husak. Is that'll be a penalty here on Milberg. So we'll see four on three for Husak with the, with the advantage for 35 seconds or so. We'll be on Christo, or sorry, Zachary Keschner. Uh, in my opinion, that's a really soft call. Bad call by the officials. Keschner was trying to play the puck in the corner. So Milbrook will go with a very defensively minded trio here with Walker uh, with the, the big frame and the physical play and you'll see Cam Lowe and Sam Renaud out there. And then for Husak, we'll see uh, Ezra Gale. We'll see Jake Bryceland, Hanusiak, and one more who is just getting off the bench. Thomas Demoulis will be the, the fourth there. So we'll see four on three hockey for 35 seconds. And then we'll see about a minute and 25 seconds of five on four hockey for Husak on the man advantages. Cam Lowe working hard in the corner to keep that puck away from Ezra, Gale, and good job by Milbert to get that puck down the length of the ice. As Hanusiak will try and get the play going in his own end. He's got some options here. We'll move it over to Lyad, and Lyad skating, shot high over the net of Jake Hugeson as Hanusiak will have to retreat. And you know, that's kind of a really selfish shot to take. You're on the power play, and you're just trying to shoot to score. He could have put that one on net far pad. Stretch here we go, Colin pass Hennessey. Here is Colin line. Hennessey, great save by Trey Tompkins. Lovely idea on the stretch pass there. But Colin Hennessey, he's, he's had some fantastic opportunities in this game. Wasn't able to put that one in the back of the net. Yeah, sorry. So what I was saying about that shot, a little bit of a selfish shot. You're shooting to score rather than shooting for a rebound which would have allowed your power play to set up in the zone, and instead, Kellen Hennessy goes right the other way. Good save there by Hugeson, just putting Panameno's wrist shot to the corner. Good use of the blocker as Bryson will try and get the power play going for Husak. He's been out there for a little while to see him get a 
change quickly as he skates over to the bench. Mason Alderson now skating around the Millbrook defense. Great idea from him with that pass back through the middle of the ice as Husak will set up the power play here. It'll be Panameno getting over to Valente. Valente fakes the wrist shot. Moves it back over to Panameno. Panameno, wrist shot. That one's just deflected up into the air and Cubison will smartly catch that here as the crowd is getting rowdy now. Yeah, crowd's into it. Interesting power play setup for Husak. They've got four guys high, one in front of the net. Uh, you can see one guy showing for that one-timer, but you know, kind of odd to have two point guys, one guy showing for the one-timer, and then of course the guy working up the wall to quarterback the play, but interesting setup by Husak. So we'll see the power play for Husak for the next 20 seconds or so as Mason Alderson, the captain for Husak, uh, you know, had a good opportunity just moments ago as Valente will have to skate back as the clock ticks down on the power play. It'll be back to five on five hockey as DJ Walsh gets on there as the fifth skater for Milbrook. And Milbrook will try and move the other way. Dan Urban losing control of the puck in center ice. And Owen Atkins will dump that one in deep. Atkins playing the body there. Just went right through the back of Dale Campbell, it looked like. Uh, but no call there. And seemingly the refs have called some, some things and haven't called others. Korpanicki moves that puck to Walsh. Walsh will stick that one into the offensive zone. Good hit along the boards on Hanusiak there. And just under three minutes left here in the first period. That shot deflected wide by Hugeson. He's been on his game so far as Milan Bongiorno will move that one in behind the net. Turkowitz out there with Panameno and DJ Walsh trying to get through two guys. And there's the call. I thought it wasn't going to be a call for a second as that far ref didn't put his hand up. But we got a whistle. Should be interference. Yeah, definitely a penalty there. DJ Walsh trying to get through those two defensemen, completely held away from the puck. You know, is it a good penalty to take? Maybe he gets on the break. Is it selfish and a little bit lazy? Yes. Uh, move your feet is my advice there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, when you see those interference tripping or hooking calls, it's normally because, you know, the defenseman isn't just moving his feet. And uh, that time he got caught in behind the play, so... Milbrook will go on the power play here. They just killed off uh, a two and a half minute down a man, or two minute down, uh, two minute down a man. They, they were down four, four on three, then five on four, excuse me. And now you get the power play here. So you'll see Christo Walker, Cam Lowe, Fabrizio Mazzarelli, DJ Walsh, and Colin Hennessy out there. Milbrook's 0 for 1 on the power play so far. Husek did a pretty good job on that penalty kill earlier in the first period, as will be Ezra Gale. Sam Russo, Jimmy Jones, and Jake Bryslin out there on the penalty kill for Husak. Yeah, Husak really good on that initial kill. Milberg needs to do a better job penetrating the Husak penalty kill box. As here comes Husak the other way. And here's Jake Bryslin with the shot. Good save by Jake Hugeson. Couldn't quite corral the rebound, but that's a dangerous chance. Great deflection there by Cam Lowe just getting in front of that puck. As DJ Walsh tries to skate around. The Hussack defense tries to get that centering feed, but good job by the Hussack defenseman to just lie out there in Jimmy Jones. Really fantastic job by him. And now you get the power play set up here as DJ Walsh skating in looking for an option. We'll just move that puck back over to Lowe with the wrist shot deflected high up and over the glass by Bryceland. And, yeah, really uh, good job by Bryceland. It's not easy to step up right in front of a big slap shot like that. Definitely nerve-wracking, but you put that aside, you sacrifice the body for the team. Good job. And Cam Lowe's got an absolute cannon of, yeah. a, of, of a slap shot. I mean, we've seen him score a couple of goals from the point on the power play so far this year. He's definitely the guy that Milbrook wants out there. It'll be Walsh and Urban playing a little catch here as Urban will move it over to Lucy. Urban back to Lucy. That one a little too far for Walsh, so he'll have to just move back into the neutral zone to corral that one as... Just over a minute left on this power play. Dan Urban moving his feet, getting the puck in deep here. Yeah, Dan. Wide of the net. Dan Urban, one of those really fast, skilled guys on this Milbrook hockey team, needs to use his legs a lot today, and he'll be really effective. 
Here's Walsh. Walsh wrist shot deflected by Panameto, who broke his stick. And that one is deflected along the ends of the ice. And Soriento calling for a penalty here as one of the Hussack guys broke the stick on the block shot, attempted to play with it. That should be a two minute minor there. So missed call by the official. Uh, and one of those really weird nuanced rules, but that that is definitely a missed call. And I wonder if, if, if Panameno actually knew he broke his stick because it's kind of a shocking that, he, that he'd go to play with the two, but uh, a little bit of a weird sequence there. But nonetheless, Milberg still with a couple seconds left on this power play, looking to just get some offensive zone here as it'll go back to five on five and just a couple ticks. Korpanicki gets on the ice here. Walsh finds the offensive zone, skates around Pagel as he goes. Oh, beauty! An absolutely fantastic play. Sammy Sal parked right in front of the net. Great dangle by Walsh. Finds Sal for the goal on the one-timer. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Zach Walsh, where has that been all season? Holy cow. That is how you split the D, get some area for the shooter. What a beautiful pass. Sweet deke. Come on, Zach Walsh. How about it? It's not a power play goal. Is it? Oh, it was five on yeah. five at the time, but what an opportunity there. What a what a fantastic goal. Walsh with the stick handling. Haven't seen that. Wow. I Pulled mean, that one out of the bag of tricks there. I'm sure uh, yeah. he'll be watching that on repeat later um, as he loves to watch the film of these games as soon as they come out. But and then Sam Sal just parked right in front of the net. Just a fantastic sequence by Milbrook. That late period goal. Trey Tompkins had no chance. As uh, Mason Alderson will go the other way here. Excuse me, that's Charlie Holt. who will just push that one into the offensive zone. And that'll be all she wrote for the first period. Is what a goal by Sam Sal set up by Zach Walsh in the dying seconds of the first period to put Milbrook up. 2-0. So Milbrook scores in the first 33 seconds, the last 33 seconds of the first period. Wow. Yeah, they say those late period goals are real killers. So really good job by Milbrook to get that late period goal. They're going in the locker room feeling good, feeling the energy, confident. Husak's going in the locker room thinking, oh geez, we just let up another goal with 33 seconds left. What are we doing, head? What are we doing wrong? Kind of scratching the head. So they got to look to come back. But really good first period by Milbrook. We'll be back in just a couple moments, about 15 minutes or so. And uh, with that said, uh, after one, Milbrook two, who sacks zero.
Welcome back to the second period here. It's Millbrook and Hoosack. Millbrook with the 2-0 lead over Hoosack after the Cole Hennessy and Sammy Sow goals in the first period. Millbrook played some entertaining hockey, played some fast-paced hockey. And although they were 0 for 2 on the power play, had some good opportunities, and they've really skated well today. They've got the legs going. What did you like about their performance so far, Charlie? I really like Millbrook's play in front of the net. Both goals coming uh, fairly point blank. Uh, uh, Sam Sal back door after a nice deke by DJ Wall. Uh, excuse me, Zach Walsh, and Cullen Hennessy's goal obviously in front, uh, just in front of the net, getting gritty. So I really like that getting to the front of the net. That helps you score goals. So here we go. It's going to be Thomas Demolis and Christo Walker in the faceoff dot here. Is Milbert's been very good from the faceoff circle today too. Um, that's another point to notice. Uh, they've been very good there as they'll win another one here. But Puck skirted through center ice and uh, it'll be Hussack who tips that one in to the offensive zone. Mason Alderson working hard there. It's going to be Colin Hennessy looking to move the play forward and that puck moves back over to Orsini who gets the opening shift of the second period. Christo Walker moves that play forward and now DJ Walsh skating with some speed there. Nice save right in front of the net. Time and time again by Trey Tompkins. We made a couple dandy saves there. Yeah, really good job by him sticking with the puck. Really good saves. Just tracking that puck using that chest protector on the first save. Puck skirted to the side of the net and just used the pads for the other two, but he's, he's getting down on his knees and into the butterfly really quickly. Here's the breakout pass, DJ Walsh. Breakaway opportunity, Walsh. Great oh, goal, what a beauty. Sweet dangle as DJ Walsh doing the Superman and all the sellies to make it three to nothing. What a goal, love the outlet pass, love the, the forehand, backhands, putting it into the net to make it 3 nothing. Yeah, really good outlet pass. Looking for the stretch pass on the breakout. Really good. That uh, Hussack defense has got to be more mindful that they've got that hangman back there on the far blue line. And just a sweet pass coming from the Millbrook defense. They find DJ Walsh up ice and an even better move in on Tompkins forehand back in. Great goal. Wow. We've seen some exciting and electric hockey here as Mike Lucy got checked through the back. No call there. Owen Atkins, point shot. And that one put into the corner. Atkins working back to Hanusiak. Hanusiak will move that into the off the zone on the chip in as D'Souza now with possession. We'll just leave it for his partner in Mazzarelli. Mike Lucy pounded by Hanusiak and Owen Atkins now finds Milan Bongiorno. Atkins, alternate captain for Hanusiak, and Hushak will ice that one as Cam Shute had nowhere else to go with the puck. Zach Walsh getting out there on the ice with Sam Renaud, the defense pairing. Uh, so yeah, Milberg really hot out of the gate here, really good work. I talked about it at the end of the last period, Goals in the beginning of the period and the end of the period are the real killers. They set the tone for the period, and they really get the crowd involved, get the bench involved, get the players involved. Really good job by Melbrook to start the period. Hussack looking to move the play the other way. It looks like Hanusiak's helmet, uh, you know, untangled itself and almost came off there. As he had the the straps all undone, so he had to go to the bench. Strong forecheck here from Millbrook, and they'll win the possession here as that puck just skirts away from Renaud's stick, and he gets upended and neutralized by Milan Bongiorno. So who's next played a physical game as Ezra Gale looking to move that puck through center? Nice hit by Korpanicki as Owen Atkins trying to move that play on net, and that play is whistled down as there's some physical hockey in front of the net between Renaud and Owen Atkins. It's going to be a cross-checking minor on Korpanicki as Hussack will go on the power play. Yeah, I don't know if I really agree with that call. You know, every hit in hockey is not always body-on-body -body straight. You know, you're holding the stick. It's going to get in the way a little bit. There was definitely no extension of the arm by Korpanicki there to cross-check. 
I don't know if I really agree with the official there, but Korpenicki's in the box either way. So it'll be Demoulis centering this first power play unit as Husak will have possession here with Alderson looking to move the puck. This is the second power play opportunity of Husak on the day as Cullen Hennessy does a good job here as he's got another breakaway opportunity. Hennessy, forehand, back came back to the forehand, saved by Tompkins. He's had four absolutely electric opportunities in today's hockey game for this Milbert squad. And here's Bryceland working the corner here. Moves the puck over to Alderson as that one skirts into neutral ice. Christo Walker will move it over to his partner in Hennessy, but Walker was offsides. So 15.07 left here in this second period of action. Milbrook leads 3-0. Husak on the power play for just over a minute and 20 seconds left on that man advantage. Yeah, Husak's got to do a better job uh, watching the D. Uh, the D need to do a better job watching that trailing guy. You saw it again with Hennessy there on the breakaway. Quick shot, good save. Uh, but they need to be more aware of what's going on next to them and behind them especially because Otherwise, you're going to be giving up breakaways all day long. Hoopsack's doing a fantastic uh, job. Excuse me, Miller's doing a fantastic job on the faceoff dot so far tonight. They had another win there, but Hoopsack's able to get this one. But, I mean, they've got to be near 70% on the night in the faceoff circle. And uh, that's given them a lot of puck possession here. Yeah. As Valente will try and move this one out of his own end. Yeah, it's, you know, faceoff's a weird number. Because you look at a face-off guy and he's 50% and you're like, mm, that's not very good. But 50% is pretty solid. And if a team is 70%, that is really good. So Milberg needs to keep it up in the face-off draw. That slapper goes wide of Huggison's neck. As Milberg unable to clear that puck down the ice, got caught up in the skates of Jimmy Jones. And Husak now, Panameno here. That play stick wide as... Urban wasn't able to move the puck quick enough and good save there by Hugeson as the Panamena wrist shot almost caught Hugeson off guard there. Really good job by the Milbrook penalty kill staying in their formation. Good block by Dan Urban stepping up to block the shot. And then when he wasn't able to clear, D'Souza stepped up, helped him out, and Hugeson made a nice save. So really good sequence of team play by the Milbrook penalty kill. Got just over 25 seconds left on this man advantage for Husak. Good job by Milbrook to clear it down the ice, but it's whistled down. Not quite sure what that call was, but Husak will get an offensive zone draw. Yeah, out of play. That puck just hit the netting, grazed along the netting on the chip out, so the draw is going to be in the zone. And there you go. Charlie Kay with the eyes that I clearly don't have. As... Christo Walker working hard to get that puck free. Walsh is able to get that one down the ice, and Husak will have to start anew. But looks to be like another Millbrook penalty kill here. They've done a really good job on the PK so far as Hanusiak lost control of that one, and we'll have to get the breakout going now as Demoulis skating through center. Finds his teammate in Bongiorno, who's able to just tip that one into the offensive zone. Walsh now, who's once again had a fantastic game for Millbrook, having that goal just moments ago with the forehand backhand move to beat Trey Tompkins for the third goal of the night for Milbrook. As Mason Alderson now looking to start the play for Husak. Good bit of stick handling there and a little bit of a saucer pass over to Hanusiak. Back over to Alderson. Alderson. That one got deflected right on net and now that puck is right in front of the net and just lifted away from there by Mazzarelli but not out of the zone as Alderson hounded by Mac Elliott who gets his first hit tonight. That shot goes right through the blue paint, and Milbrook is able to come unscathed as that puck bounces out of play. Yeah, really good job by Hugeson sticking with that puck. You can see him tracking it really well because he saw the deflection in front of him and moved accordingly to still make the save. It's also a good example of why you go to the front of the net and get in front. You get weird bounces, good deflections, and good high-scoring opportunities. And in some other Milbrook sporting news. It looks like the girls basketball team won today as well as the boys varsity basketball team and uh, the girls varsity hockey team also won just moments ago before this game started. So it's been a pretty good day for Millbrook Athletics. Good to see Millbrook's boys varsity hockey team up 3-0 here to try and continue this streak as Gio Panicola will get a 
face-off win here as Milbrook continues their dominance in the face-off circle. Here's Keshner. Keshner, nice bit of nifty stick handling, but he gets robbed of the puck there by Graceland. Milbrook trying to move that play forward. It'll be Keshner here. Keshner looking for an option as Trey Tompkins will cover that one up. Good job by Keshner getting that puck to the net and low. Uh, would have been a little bit better if he got that far pad as Gio Pinnacolo was coming hard to the net. You know, that's always the goal. You want to look for a rebound in that situation. But uh, still pretty good shot by Kessler, keeping it low and on the pads. Just over 12 and a half left here in the second period of action. We haven't quite hit the, the halfway mark of this hockey game so far, but in this first half, I mean, Millbrook has owned Hussack so far, especially on those, uh, you know, late and early period opportunities. It's Fabrizio Mazzarelli, that shot deflected just wide by Mike Lucy's skate. Uh, Urban was also out there in front too, as Lucy trying to get possession back, but Jake Bryland, Bryceland, excuse me, is able to clear that one of the offensive zone for Millbrook. Urban, working hard, loses that puck, and just a pinball in the offensive zone for Millbrook as that one skirts out to center. Ezra Gale, great pass to Bryceland, is fantastic defense there by D'Souza, who's able to get the poke check and knock that puck free. And get rid of that opportunity for Milbrook. Good job by Mike Lucy now. Lucy, sharp angle shot. Puck right in front of the net and they score again! This time it's Dale Campbell with the gritty goal in front of the net, making it four nothing for Milbrook. Yeah, I just talked about it, but you talk about shooting far, Pat, that was the perfect shot. You look for the rebound like they just got. Dale Campbell parked himself right in front of the net. Perfect spot, great sequence, great initial shot by Mike Lucy. Good short angle shot by Lucy. Now, probably that's the only real mistake Trey Tompkins has made all day. Couldn't quite corral the rebound. The puck skirted right in through the middle of the crease, and Dale Campbell, you know, hustling hard to put his stick on that. And even then, I mean, yeah, so, you know, like as a goaltender, it's really hard to corral a rebound that gets shot far pad. Uh, really hard. You have to cover it up with a glove if you're going to do something about it, but that's on the offhand. And, and an over goal! What a goal by Connor Korpenik. I was talking to him before the game, said he'd score one. And here goes that. Back-to-back -back goals from Milbert. They've scored five on answer, two in the past 25 seconds. As Connor Korpenik on senior night, number 21 in, I guess, pink today, scoring an absolute... Beauty for Milberg. I think that one went that one went five hole. On yeah. Really, really good hustle by Korpanicki. Just getting in the offensive zone, keeps skating, keeps moving his feet, plays right through even though he was a little bit tangled up and kept going. Really good hustle by him. We're not. Who's over to Walsh? Walsh finding Sammy Sal who's got a goal in this game, but Husak has possession in the offensive zone for them. It'll be Diara moving up, Alonzo Diara. That pass right through the middle of the ice and Panameno now working uh, back over. That shot just deflected down and it looked like uh, Max Brand hit the ice a little hard, but could you see that he got up and is skating out there, hustling there. It's Brand finding Panameno. And Panameno with the sharp angle shot deflected. That one went right through the blue paint. I think it just went wide as Connor Korpanicki able to skirt that one down the length of the ice. And good hustle there by Sam Sal. Wouldn't have been icing as the Hoosack defenseman made a play on it and couldn't quite corral it. But nonetheless, Millbrook 5 nothing up. I mean, they're coasting now, aren't they? Yeah, they're moving their legs. They're skating really hard, skating really fast. They're, you can tell they're skating with confidence. The bench is loud. The crowd is loud. It's a really good atmosphere in the Bonnecke right now. So 10.34 left in the second period. Milbrook up 5-0. As Milbrook will win another draw. DJ Wall shot, gloved down by Trey Tompkins. I don't think the clock moved on that. Um, but you know, Milbrook's continuing to just dominate in the face-off circle. I mean, they've done it throughout the first period into the second period now as we hit the halfway point of this game. 
Yeah, it might seem obvious, but you know, if you win the draw, you get automatic possession in the zone, especially on those offensive zone draws. So winning faceoffs really important. Looked like Walker tried to go for the wraparound opportunity, but got sticked away as Mason Alderson now possession. Alderson skating to the corner wide, trying to find Demoulis, but that pass a little off the mark. Good back check there by Alderson, who's just grinding away, trying to keep his team in this one. As now it's going to be another breakaway opportunity for Cullen Hennessy. Hennessy stops, oh. pass a little too far for DJ Walsh, a little over the reach of his stick. But another great opportunity there, but good job by the Hoopsack defense to close down and collapse there. Yeah, they did a better job back checking there, but still they got to pay attention to what's happening around them, pick up their head and see that Cullen Hennessy's hanging on that hang pass, gets another one on the breakaway opportunity, not able to score though. And this first line has been buzzing all night. Cullen Hennessy, DJ Walsh, and Christo Walker, what have you seen from them that you really liked? You know, they're moving their feet a lot. Obviously, Colin Hennessy's had a lot of breakaways. DJ Walsh moving his feet as well. Christo driving hard to the net, finishing hits. They're just playing really well as a one cohesive unit to moving the puck around a lot. So we'll see that fourth line out here with Gio Panicola, Nate Rebello, and Zach Keshner getting some time and I'm sure we'll see a lot of time for them as Gio Panicola lays that one off to Keshner with the wrist shot gloved down by Trey Tompkins. Really great vision there by Panicola setting up Keshner on the shot. Yeah Panicola might be a little bit allergic to goals right now you know maybe something in the air whatever but he's still got the ability the ability to make good passes as he did there teed up Keshner for a pretty good shot too. Jake Bracelin wasn't able to kick that one to his stick. Panicola working hard and hustling love to see him out there uh, for this Millbrook team. I mean, he's just a guy with great energy and a lot of grit. And although, you know, he hasn't really scored that much this year, uh, you know, just always out there working hard and grinding away. And I'm sure, you know, as he as he gets older, too, remember, he's only a sophomore. He's, he's definitely going to be a more important part of this team moving forward. As Kester tries to move this one free, he's able to do so. And he's now got possession in the defensive end, trying to move that play forward. He's able to get away from Ezra Gale as Fabrizio Mazzarelli looks to move that puck forward right oh. over the stick of Nate Rebello on that back post. Another great opportunity. Yeah, those odd man rushes are killing Husak right now. If they keep letting those up, one of them's going to end up in the back of the net and they're going to find themselves down by six. Uh, so, But good job by Nate Rebello getting that back post area and pretty good pass by Mazzarelli just a little too far for Rebello. Good sequence. So we'll see Korpanicki in the face-off draw, and I was, as I said, I, I talked to him just before the game, and he was saying how uh, he's feeling a little bit more confident in that face-off circle, has had some recent success um, against some guys, um, played against the UConn commit in, uh, a couple games ago and ended up winning like three or four face-offs against him, so he's taken some pride in the face-off circle of late, and I mean, I guess this Milberg team is catching on to that, as they've had a lot of success, something that we've talked about repeatedly in the second period with Milberg up 5-0 if you're just joining us with just over eight minutes left here in the second frame. Yeah, I want to circle back to the face-off real fast. Corbin Hickey, you know, face-offs are kind of a weird acquired skill. Uh, it's all about reaction time and being the first to move your stick. So you never know who could be good at, at face-offs on your squad. Uh, and if you find a guy who is, that's really important. So Korpernicki working hard, playing some defense there, something that his teammates say that he doesn't do a lot. But uh, there he was in the defensive zone. As Milberg, big hit in neutral ice. Charlie Holt gets right back up. Little shove by Owen Atkins on Matt Kelly. Good save by Jake Hugenson. And this game's starting to get a little physical here as see you know, a couple big hits there on that last sequence. Yeah, Husak definitely getting frustrated. Uh, you know, you're down 5 nothing. you're halfway into the second period, it's not going the way you want it to, obviously. And so, usually the solution is hit harder and hit more, because that feels right. I would say do the opposite if you're Hussack. Get your feet moving, pick your head up, and try to make some hockey plays here. Mason Alderson over to Diara. Diara lost track of that one as Dale Campbell had to go get that. If he was able to corral it off, uh, you know, the poke check, it would have been a probably an opportunity the other way from Milbert. Nonetheless, they'll get some off-the-zone opportunity here as Mike Lucy, sharp angle shot, good save with the shoulder 
by Trey Tompkins, who's moving really well on that there. It's going to be a delayed call here as Jake Hugeson will get to the net as Millwork will go six on five for the moment with the delayed penalty here. Looking to move it the other way. Just dump it in down low as Hussack will touch off here as Millbrook will get another power play. They're 0 for 2 on the day, but they've had some good opportunities. Yeah, uh, good heads up play, first of all, by Dan Urban to skate that backwards, let Hugeson make it to the bench, get that six attacker on, so you get extra man time before the power play even starts. So good heads up hockey IQ type maneuver there by Dan Urban. We're going to see Ursini on the power play here. This is interesting here. He's going to be in that uh, high slot area working with Mazzarelli. And what can you tell us about his game and him you know, getting some uh, power play time as well as Alex Frazier too getting his first shift of the game right here. Yeah, Matt Arsini and Alex Frazier both work hard. Matt arsini has been on this team four years now. Sort of a, a lower defenseman in this, if you will, but you know, you can't really say that. They're all prep school defensemen, very high class. But he's got a good shot, he's physical, and he works hard, so he deserves some power play time here. And Alex Frazier really works hard. He's going to get to the front of the net, as you see him here. Bigger body, and he's able to make a lot happen. As that sits on the goal line, and they score. And there's a goal for Alex Frazier. What a goal there. Good opportunity for Milbert. That shot was able to be completely corralled by Trey Tompkins. Went right through his legs. He's sitting on that post, literally on the post, half of the puck over the goal line and half of it in the blue paint. And what a great play by Alex Frazier. Just drive to the front of the net and tap the one in home for the goal and make it six to nothing as uh, Fabrizio Mazzarelli coming over to give Frazier the puck. A guy who doesn't get a lot of time for this team. Um, and you played with him on, 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 on JV Hockey. Good story for, for Frazier. Yeah, yeah I, played, I played JV Hockey with him uh, a couple years ago. Uh, really hard worker, impressive skater. You know, he always talked about playing varsity. Last year he was kind of a swing player. This year he makes, I mean, he made the squad last year. Didn't get that much time. Gets a little bit more this year. Gets rewarded with some hard work with a good goal. Uh, another clarification to make, though, we're playing NCAA hockey rules here. So, referee had his arm up. Delayed penalty coming when Frazier scored that goal. And per NCAA rules, Milbrook will still get that power play time. It won't be five on three, obviously, because that first penalty is washed out. But they will be five on four here after and, that delayed call. And here's Gio Panicola centering this uh, power play line here with Rafim Muhammad out there as well as Cam Lowe. And it's going to end up being a null to the power play. As they'll go to four on four hockey here as Panicola looks to be going to the box for two minutes. So tough break there for him. He won't be happy with that. I'm sure we'll hear a load of that one later. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's tough. You're coming off the dot. You tie the man up on the dot as Panicola did. And, you know, that's okay. But then he goes to the ice. The referee's maybe going to make that call. It's sort of a judgment call. Not the best call, but I can see where the referee's coming from there. So 6 nothing. if you're just joining us. Millbrook advantage with just over six minutes left. Good save by Jake Hugerson on the Sam Turkowitz shot. As we'll see some four on four time for a minute 47 and then Hussack will get the five on four advantage for about seven seconds. Milbrook fan section getting into it too. Uh, something that we've been you know, calling for at some of these games here is Jimmy Jones moved that one over to Turkowitz. Turkowitz. Lost possession, and I think he just dumped that one in deep. Or no, he actually didn't even touch that. And that'll be uh, icing. Yeah, you mentioned the fan section. Uh, just, I mean, you and I are both athletes, but you feed off that crowd noise. If you're home, it is an unbelievable feeling when the crowd is right there with you, especially in this rink, they're right on top of you. Uh, and they're just yelling and screaming loud. It's, it's a whole much better game experience when they're involved. So uh, look for this Milbrook team to feed off the crowd energy here. Appreciate you calling me an athlete. Don't know how accurate that is. I mean, maybe more of a JV superstar. I don't know about the athlete bit. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Bryceland going the other way here as Hussack has some offensive zone possession. Glove down there by Cam Lowe as Milbrook looks to move the other way as Milbrook rocking them 
one of one pink uh, special edition uh, pink the rink jerseys once again to support cancer awareness um, as Milbrook has made this an annual tradition as Cam Lowe, sharp angled shot thought that one in the net as the Gatorade bottle popped up but good save there by uh, Trey Tompkins who's you know, been a little bit more on edge here in, in the second period. Uh, still, you know, he's kept this this Hoosack team in the game, uh, or at least, I mean, as much in the game as it could be. I mean, it could easily be 10 nothing if he wasn't on top of his game. As Milbrook said, countless grade-A opportunities, especially Colin Hennessy, who, although found the back of the net on the first Milbrook goal, has not been able to do so on four or five. Just excellent opportunities uh, since then as Hugeson got tied up uh, behind his own net by Charlie Holtz. But it looks like Christo Walker will be able to come away with the puck here as Raheem Muhammad, or excuse me, Ryan D'Souza. So I, I, apparently I think everyone's Ryan D'Souza, and then I think D'Souza's Raheem Muhammad. So Milbrook defenseman on the pink jersey is just very weird for the eye here. <laughs> It'll be Sam Renaud just putting that one off the boards, and D'Souza now just risks that one high and wide. Milbrook getting this offensive zone going is... Getting that puck right on the front of the net. Sam Renaud looked like he had a goal, but it went right through the blue paint. Oh, and he did. He did have a goal. It looked like it bounced up. So Renaud makes it 7-0. Getting the hype of the crowd going. And, and Trey Tompkins, is he's not happy right now. Yeah, <laughs> Renaud gets rewarded going hard to the net. Defenseman, a lot of heart. Renaud, one of the most passionate hockey players I've ever met. And uh, it's good to see him get rewarded. He's always, he plays hard 110% of the time. He gives you 185% effort all the time. Uh, really good in the locker room culture, as I hear. Um, so, you know, you like to see those guys get rewarded. And this is where the Milbrook fan section's really got it going. And I'm, I'm interested to see how Milbrook decides to keep playing, uh, maybe with some of their personnel in the next... A couple minutes or so, and even into the third period, you see Alex Frazier here get another shift with some of the big boys here, Mike Lucy and Connor Korpanicki. Good for him there. Uh, after scoring the goal earlier, Walsh moves it over to Lucy. He'll move it back over to Walsh. Walsh over to Rossini as Rossini looks to move the play forward. Given up, though, as that shot by Lyad used the blocker from Hugeson to push that one to the corner. Bouncing puck here is Russo with the wrist Ooh, shot off low the and skate blade. off the skate. And Husak having some nice opportunities here coming uh, off that last sequence on Jake Hugeson testing him, but he stand, stood tall, excuse me, in the net. Good stick down there by Walsh as this period continues to glide by. Five Milbrook goals in the frame as a little bit of a three-on-two developing here, but Dorman Dontov, 72 and white, was able to get back for Husak to make it three-on-three three as Lucy skates wide, finds his man, and great save there by Tompkins in traffic with the glove. Yeah, and you see coming off the bench a couple different combinations of lines for Sorrento. I always talk to him and he says, you know, we're going to play jazz. That's one of his favorite expressions. And right now, he's playing jazz with his lines. Uh, this is a good opportunity for him to see who can work well together in a, in a little bit less pressured environment right now, now that they have that seven-goal cushion. So important moments to see who has that chemistry right now. And uh, you normally think 7 nothing hockey game. That's uh, pretty uncommon. As what a oh! on the one-timer by Marco Santana, set up by T.J. Walsh. What a fantastic play. Great vision there by Walsh to set up Santana in front of the net, who just rocketed that one home to make it 8-0. Yeah, uh, D.J. Walsh, that's what he's been doing all three years of his time here. If you don't watch much Milbrook hockey, that's D.J. Walsh right there. Skates hard, skates fast, gets some space, and then just makes an unbelievable pass to set up Marco Santana right in the slot and puts it home. And we'll get a little bit of a goalie change, goaltending change for Husak number 74, Jude Ailing in net, the senior in net. July 13th birthday, it's close to my birthday, so 
hey, you know, well, happy birthday in July. I might forget to wish you that I won't be around with you in July. That is true. I would pr probably prefer being here in the Bonacue talking hockey with you, but you know, there is no hockey in the Bonacue in July. No, only tennis. So only tennis, I, yeah. I will stay away from school and take my break while it's tennis season around here. Good save by Ailing there on Christo Walker, who had a good backhanded opportunity there. Good to see Gio Panicola working hard there, looking for his opportunity here as Walker will just give that one over to D'Souza. D'Souza back to Walker. Mm. Tried that one-timer, but was un unable to get that on net. And uh, good to see uh, Nolan Cadu out there for his first shift of the night. Not Gio Panicola. Excuse me there. And as I was saying uh, before, you know, the goal, who at this point I don't even remember who scored. You know, we've, we've seen eight. Oh, goes. But yeah. uh, Marco Santana there is oh. Nolan Cadu! Oh. With an opportunity gets denied by Ailing. As a do another good story too. Uh, you know, you played with him on JV Puck. Uh, what can you tell us about his game? Yeah, I played with Nolan, Nolan Cadu last year. Uh, made the varsity squad this year. He is hard. Like, he hits you hard. He plays hard. I keep saying hard. There's a lot of gritty guys on this team. But he's got, like, Nolan Cadu hits hard. He packs a punch. Uh, a lacrosse player by trade and a hockey player in secondary and he knows how to hit hard yeah as i was about to say definitely a strength guy with the with the lacrosse uh, background i mean he can fling that lacrosse ball wicked yeah. fast um, and he shoots that puck almost just as fast so he's definitely got the strength but as i was saying um you know you normally get seven nothing eight nothing hockey games you don't really see them they're kind of uncommon but girls varsity just winning seven nothing yeah. now boys varsity up eight nothing after you know, more or less two periods. Here's Gio Panicola. Oh. That was his opportunity. Padded away by Ailing using the blocker there as Cam Lowe will just dump that one in far post. But, you know, Panicola's looking hungry. He's wanting that uh, goal there as cross ice pass. The stretch pass didn't work there, and Mobrick will go the other way as Keshner. Wow, big hit there as uh, Lyad stared. Rebello yeah. down. He lined him up and finished him off. Yeah. But Rebello pops right back up. No big deal for him. You know, you just wind him back up and he gets going again. He's amazing. A lot of energy. Just under 40 seconds left in this second period of action. Melbourne's put up a six spot here to make it eight nothing. Force the goaltending change for Husak having Jude Ailing in that there. And uh, Ailing will come out to play that puck. Leaves it over for Cam Shoot as Nate Rebello will move it over to Cam Lowe. Rebello now with the puck again. Rebello skates around looking for an option. That pass in front of the net. Blo uh, padded away by Ailing, excuse me, as Rebello now with an opportunity. Oh. Lost control of that one. Panicola right in the middle of his skates was the puck but couldn't find it as clock will tick down. Vaughn with the shot wide of the net as that puck goes all the way back into the defensive zone for Husek, and that will be all she wrote for the second period. Milberg putting up six goals, a lot of effort, some just awesome offense, an explosive offensive effort here in the second period for Milberg. Charlie, what did you see? You know, I thought the first period was good. Obviously, this period was better. They moved their legs faster. They shot the puck more often. They found themselves in the right area, which typically is the front of the net more often. And... The chemistry was just rolling. Gotta love DJ Walsh's effort there with the goal and an assist in the period. Setting up, uh, you know, uh, Marco Santana in the dying moments of that second period and obviously scored the absolute beauty on the forehand backhand move to beat Tompkins uh, to make it 3-0 early in the second period. That feels like a very long time ago. But nonetheless, yeah. just a couple moments away from third period action and after two, Millibrook 8, Husak 0.
dirty on you. So it looks like Guy Vassallo will be the starting netminder for the third period for Milberg here. Good to see him get out there for some game action. Yeah, I, I talked to Gabe uh, earlier in the day today, and he said that on the schedule this game was supposed to be his. And then uh, one of the TP games that Milberg will close the season with was rescheduled to TP away. So then this became senior night, and of course Huggy is going to get the senior night start. So we're going to see Gabe, and Gabe Vassallo in for that third period. This game was originally supposed to be his. Hopefully he can make some waves in this game. So we see Ailing in net for Husak. Remember, he came in late in that second period after Thompson left in, let in the eighth goal of the game. And uh, we'll see none other than Gabe Vassallo uh, in between the pipes from Melbrook here to start the third. Yeah, anyway. two very opposite goalie changes. Yes, very, very opposite and very different reasons for them. Um, Fabrizio Mazzarelli now with the puck looking to move the play forward as he finds his teammate and Matt Elliott. They're pretty good friends uh, off the ice, them and uh, DJ Walsh. Really a trio that's really close to, uh, together, them and Colin Hennessy too. Um, Bryceland now with possession through neutral ice. So he's looking to get the wheels turning. Glove down by Cam Lowe. Pushes that one out to center ice. And, you know, you're down ain't nothing. You're not winning this game if you're Hussack. But what do you do if you're Hussack to try and build momentum for the next game? You go out and you win the third period. At least you'll have something positive to say. Uh, you work hard and... You know, hopefully if you get some goals in this third period, coach is going to be a little bit more lenient in practice tomorrow with those suicides. <laughs> oh, you know you know who sacks getting the suicides tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, just this, yeah, this team is, uh, they've, they've been on their heels all day. You know, you can tell that the players are frustrated. I'm sure the coaching staff is frustrated, and they're, they're going to have a fun practice tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of skating, a lot of skating. Uh, nonetheless, it's going to be Milan Bongiorno trying to work that puck for he's able to do so as Panameno loses that in the middle of the ice as Charlie Holt got a little bit of a love tap by what to be Dale Campbell. Alex Frazier out there once again after the goal. And that puck got somewhere. I, 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 thought, it, I thought it got on net, but then it just bounced it's, around in some equipment somewhere. It sounded like it hit the pad of uh, Ailing, uh, and then may have taken a carom off of something else, but I think the initial shot hit the pad of Ailing. That would make sense as Frazier trying to work free. Puck in front of the net, just wide of the goal mount there, as couldn't quite tuck it home. Puck battle along the boards here, and it'll be Owen Atkins who touches up. And we have a whistle here. Sending Milbrook back to power play. I think it's going to be, I, I believe the call is, uh, is tripping, uh, cross-checking, excuse me. So a uh, different looking power play than we're accustomed to seeing. Obviously you're up 8 nothing. you want to try out some different guys out there, but it's going to be Papo Santana who's got to go on this game. You'll see Mike Lucy and Nolan Cadu out there with Sam Renaud and Zach Wolf. You know, and these these moments are important because, you know, some, somewhere along the line, some guy maybe gets sick, he gets injured, he's not able to play, and you got to put somebody else on the power play unit. And, yeah, you can practice with them in practice, but there's nothing like game experience. And so this is really good for the Millbrook power play unit and some of those guys to be able to, able to get in, get taught, and get some game experience with the power play. Good job by Renaud to leave that, leave that one for Lucy, but he gets tied up along the boards by Ezra Gale, who 
Although captain for who Zach's had a pretty quiet game so far, brings the post. That was a shot from Renaud. Wicked wrister couldn't quite find the back of the net as Ealing couldn't make the save, but the post could. Lucy yeah, they, looking to move the play the other way. Yeah, Charlie. They say the post is the goalie's best friend. You hear that from Mark Andre Fleury a lot. You see him rub the post a lot. That is exactly why. And Gio Panicola now getting some power play time, really pulling for him to try and put one in the back of the net. As just over 50 seconds left on the power play for Millbrook, and just a couple ticks under 15 minutes left in this third period of action. If you're just joining us, Millbrook is leading eight nothing. DJ Walsh having a fantastic game so far, having a couple assists and a goal. Colin Hennessy, the first goal of today's game, back long ago in the first period to open up the scoring. And a flurry of goals from Marco Santana, Sammy Sal. Am I missing anyone? I mean, it has uh, been a DJ eight. Walsh. Uh, and it's hard to keep track of the score sheet at this point, but. You know what's good about that is depth scoring. You're not just naming the same guy who scored four out of the eight goals and then two other of your top guys scored the other four. So Surpri depth scoring. And surprisingly, Husak has actually been pretty good on the penalty kill tonight. I think they're one for, uh, three for four, excuse me, on the PK. Um, as most of Milbrook's opportunities have come on five on five plays. It looks like Husak will have an opportunity here going two on one the other way. Sharp angle shot could save by Vasallo off the mask and then a little bit of a shove at the end by Panameno who just kind of lost control and skated into Vasallo. But everything's okay and behind the play. And uh, that first save for a goalie coming off the bench is always hard and important to make it a save and not a goal. You know, you're, you've been sitting there standing on the bench for, for, uh, for about 20, 40 minutes, excuse me, 40 minutes. So you gotta get the legs moving, you gotta get your brain engaged again. So it's good to see that he got sort of an easier first shot and Vitalo was able to make the save and get his mindset in the game. Big wrister by Pagel, or excuse me, slapper by Pagel. That one was deflected wide. And, you know, Husak was trying to use that physical play that they've shown at times in this game here as uh, Mike Lucy and Milan Bongiorno getting into it along the boards as this play is whistled down as Mike Lucy's, or excuse me, Colin Annecy's bucket. Yeah, you don't see yeah, that I very often. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> the, the tip of the cage got stuck in Hennessy's cage. So they, they, they were tied up like two uh, two bucks with their ankle, er, excuse me, antlers tangled up. A uh, little bit of a weird sequence, but. That stretch pass intercepted by Bongiorno as Mattercini now of possession trying to get the play moving forward. Goes D to D to Cam Lowe, back over to Orsini, and he'll just let that one glide out to center as Colin Hennessy dumps that one in deep. No icing as he gained the red line, so Milbrook will be able to get partial changes. Bongiorno heckled by DJ Walsh, but it'll be Thomas DeMoulis able to come away with that one as... Really good step up by Cam Lowe in the neutral zone. He knew he could get to that puck, and he stepped up and got it deep. Max Brand going the other way now, looking for a passing lane. Isn't able to do so, so he'll just dump that one deep but ends up going over the glass and out of play so on senior night I mean you can't really ask for much more than this 8 nothing lead if you're just joining us with just under 12 and a half left to play in this hockey game how has Milbert commanded this game uh, I think honestly chemistry all the lines uh, seemed like they were working well together passing well, finding clean, crisp passes. We saw a lot of those odd man rushes that were chancing for Millbrook created because of tape-to-tape -tape stretch passes, and that's all because of awareness and chemistry. Sam Renaud lost an edge there as Husak will regain possession here as Sam Russo trying to skate into the offensive zone with a little bit of stick handling, but loses that one to Mac Elliott, who let that one go to neutral ice. Off the boards to Sam Turkowitz, that's too far for him, and Renaud Nice little bit of skating there to skate free of Turkowitz. Back over to Renaud. Renaud looking to move the play forward. He'll just dump that cross corner as Milbrook will get the offensive zone opportunity going now. Husak regains possession in their defensive zone and they'll move that one to neutral ice. That'll be Torvodontov with the chip to the opposite corner and D'Souza will move that one 
out of his defensive zone, Korpanicki. Back over to Renaud. Renaud looking for a passing lane. He'll find D'Souza. D'Souza moves it to the off the zone, and Alex Frazier working hard to try and keep it there. It went right through his skates, and now Novak will have to go back on the forecheck to regain possession. And Dale Campbell, that's who also scored there, too. Yes. Uh, in that second period. Remember, we'll put up six goals in that second period. And, you know, the game settled down here a little bit for Husak here in the third, and Lilbrook's still definitely, uh, you know, taking advantage of a little bit of better skating abilities and maybe a little bit more skill. That really take control is that pass right through the blue paint. Looks like we'll have a whistle here. And that came off. Uh, it seems like we're going to have an upcoming penalty as well. Oh, no change, sorry. Excuse me, no penalty. Just the official yelling, no change at the Hoosack bench. Millbrook fan section, happy with the eight goal cushion. You don't really hear that as a cushion. That's more like no. a, you know, princess in the pea, you know, eight mattresses high kind of story is Hoosack trying to skate the other way. Good job by Keshner keeping that one in the offensive zone. Valencia a little bit of a love tap with the stick is Milbrook now with full possession in the defensive zone. Not a lot of pressure here as Husak gets the change. Urban now through neutral ice getting into the offensive zone. Urban sharp angle shot deflected wide off the glove of Ailing as Urban will try and work that one free. Hounds Diara but Diara is able to get free and as Owen Atkins couldn't quite corral that one as Keshner will work back. Atkins loving to use that physical play for Husak is Fabrizio Mazzarelli sometimes just does this, skates right through everyone. Shot wide, deflected I think that was. Good hit by Nolan Cadu there on Charlie Holt, who's gotten a couple big hits on him in this hockey game. He's popped up every time. Good to see him there once again. Just a loose puck there. Is Mozzarella is able to finally skate free of pressure. But Urban got tangled up with Panameno. And I think that was Lucy, Lucy getting tangled up there. Yeah, excuse me, you're right. Uh, to broaden the view a little bit on the boys' season here, uh, four games after today, uh, this is their fifth last if that if that uh, <laughs> sounds right, and in talking to Coach Sorrento, uh, he said the game plan is, uh, and a lot of the players say the game plan is we got to win the four of these next five, and so now that game plan becomes if they continue to hold this lead, you never know what can happen in the game of hockey, but they got to win three of the next four after today, and with a win today, which it looks like that will be after you know eight goals up in the third period with just. Under nine minutes left to play. Big hit in neutral ice there between Bryceland and Lucy. Good to see both of them pop back up as Thomas Demoulis goes in the off the zone for Husak. But as I was saying, uh, they'll move back to 500 with a win here, so that's big for them too. I, I wouldn't start saying that this is a win in the books. You never know what can happen in the game of hockey. And then a little bit of an unnecessary shove there, blindsided. A little bit of a blindside hit by Mason Appleton, uh, uh, Mason Alderson. I was wondering when that was going to happen. Uh, obviously, Mason Appleton plays for the Kraken. I, I had a feeling I was going to call Mason Alderson, Mason, Mason Appleton at least once tonight. As uh, Milbrook will skate the other way, Nate Rebello getting the legs going. Ezra Gale able to corral that puck and neutralize, just dumps that one in the off the zone. But, you know, you'll move back to 500 uh, as long as uh, Milbrook's able to hang on with the cushion here. Gio Panicola skates in the off the zone shot. Deflected, never got to the net. Sam Russo was able to keep that one away. And Alexi Parent let's try to stick that one deep as Ryan D'Souza now with Cam Lowe. Lowe off the boards, trying to get Sam Sal going. Uh, Sam Sal, nice bit of hustle and hard work there. But uh, Ezra Gale will find that one and tried to make a little move on Cam Lowe, but Alexi Parent wasn't able to do so. Good Ooh. spin move by uh, Ryan D'Souza. A little yeah, bit of an unorthodox. A little bit of an un unorthodox move there in your own defensive zone. And 
Yeah, D'Souza, one of the biggest guys on this team, weighing in about 225. Uh, you don't see a lot of fancy stick handling from him usually. It's normally uh, a lot of strength and you know high IQ plays from D'Souza. Love watching him work here. Is D'Souza looking for an option? D'Souza just let that one find his teammate Panicola, but Panicola is having a little bit of a rough game. Isn't being able to isn't quite the sharpest at the moment, but you know, he's still working hard. Took a penalty earlier on, good to see him still out there. There's DJ Walsh hustling here. You know, and I don't think that Panicola's not as sharp as he normally is or something like that. He's just not playing with the confidence that comes with playing and scoring. You know, when you score a goal, you get a lot of confidence and it makes you play better. And Gio hasn't experienced that yet this season. He's goalless throughout the season so far. and. That's part of the reason he's not playing his best when he's frustrated because he's not getting that confidence. Mac Elliott and Max Brand tied up there. Both of them fell and crashed the ice. Big breakout pass to Panameno. This could be an opportunity here. Great play defensively by Raheem Muhammad, tangling Panameno up. And it looked like Panameno almost went with a little bit of a punch there, but I think he just lost his balance. Cole Hennessy going the other way. Sharp angle shot, but that one goes wide of Ailing's net. We're going to see a penalty upcoming yeah, we'll against penalty here. Husak. Wonder if that's on Panameno or something else there. Husak will get the touch here. And uh, someone will go to the box for Husak. Yeah, pure frustration is what we're seeing for Husak. I mean, you're down 8 nothing. It's going to be Charlie Holt going to the sin bin. No signal from the referee, but... Uh, It's going to be, yeah. Yeah, I would just say that it's pure frustration at this point for uh, for Husak. Um, you know, you're down 8 nothing. six minutes left. It feels like you're helpless to the whim of this Milberg team. That's when you start to take penalties because you try and hit everybody and you just make unnecessary and dumb plays like you did here. And you could further put your team below the eight goal deficit and possibly to nine if Milbrook's able to capitalize on this power play. Great single-handed effort there by Fabrizio, Fabrizio Mazzarelli, excuse me, gaining the offensive zone. And uh, Husak will put it back the other way. They'll get the change on the penalty kill. Good to see Gio Panicola out there as long as, as, as long, along with, excuse me, I can't speak right now. Panicola right from the net. Shot saved by Ailing. It's still there, right there's Panicola trying to get a stick on it. Kesher now looking for an option. We'll swing it to Panicola. Panicola, sharp angle shot. Trying to come up from behind the net, but got deflected and up and out of play. And he is hungry. He really wants one here. You can see him working hard in front of the net. Kudos to P uh, Panicola with sticking with it. Following up on the rebound, trying to get a third chance. Good job by Gio Panicola. And Zach Kesher actually, too. Zach Kessner set Gio Panicola up for that second attempt, uh, working well there below the dots. Raheem Muhammad lost control of that one, so Milbrook's power play will have to reset here as Nate Rebello gets the pass in the offensive zone. Good job by Milbrook setting up the power play here as D'Souza lost control of it there. Puck goes in the air, D'Souza unable to control it, and finds the puck now as just tied up along the boards. Owen Atkins working hard to get that free. And I think a good takeaway, honestly, from this Husak team. Uh, a little bit of friendly fire. In this game. Uh, I mean, is friendly fire really friendly if it if it's still firing at you? Yes. But nonetheless. Clear <laughs> attempt hitting, uh, hitting Danny Laycott. And he is hurting on the bench. Just under 20 seconds left in this power play opportunity. Right in front oh. of that, Nate Rebelli goes down trying to get it on the back end. Gilles are able to just slap it down the ice. But as I was saying, Husak penalty kill has been pretty good today, especially being 8 nothing down. You'd expect them to have struggled. Yeah, it's been pretty solid. They're doing a good job getting in the lanes, definitely blocking a lot of shots. But, I, I mean, you know, we're not seeing the full brute force of the Melbourne power play. But definitely kudos to them for blocking shots. You know, it's hard to stay engaged and energized in a game where you're down 8 nothing. But if you're still blocking shots, you're doing something right. Icing waved off here as Valente will 
leave that one as Kesher will get it. And Krista Walker in front of the net. And couldn't, Korpenicki couldn't quite put it home. As Korpenicki also had a goal, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ezra Gale able to clear it from the middle of the ice. Cam Lowe still looking for an option. I love Cam Lowe's game. Those just beautiful vision from him all yeah, the time. He's a joy to watch day in and day out. So calm and collected on the blue line. He's got a really good shot, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast. And he's just a lot of fun to watch. You know, he rarely makes mistakes, and that is exactly what you want on your back end. Just look at him here. Just really calm. Didn't see an option there. Put it back to Zach Walsh, another really calm, cool, collected defenseman. He's been a little quiet in today's game, but nonetheless. Well, I don't know. That uh, oh, well, yeah, beauty of fair. a stick handling that play. No goals, but he's definitely working hard today. Yeah, he had that beautiful stick handle, remember, in the second period to set up Sam Sow. Uh, or first period rather, to set up Sam Sal with the goal. And Krista Walker with Christo some nice Walker. hands of himself. We've definitely seen a lot of skill in this game as Mason Alderson going the other way. Not Mason Apple Appleton, but Alderson here. Put that one right through the blue paint and it's going to be a call here. Thinking against Zachary Keshner for a little bit of a shove in the back. Yeah, on, cross check uh, through the numbers. Graceland. Keshner just sort of looking to stop. Puts his stick on the back of Graceland. And pushes through, you know, penalty, yes. Unfortunate, also, yes. So just over two minutes left in this game here for Millbrook. What are our takeaways? I mean, you know, you said it just a couple seconds ago. We've seen a lot of skill in this game, and that's the way this Millbrook hockey team should be playing. This Millbrook team is very skilled. There's a lot of guys with some really soft hands who can make a lot of stuff happen on their own. And that has happened all season. But the better part is that they use their skill to make things happen and then they use the space they created to pass the puck and set up their teammates to put goals in the back of the net. And I think that's what they've been missing a lot this season. But it definitely happened today. And so let's see if they can carry it as they go into the tougher stretch of their schedule here. These last four games are gonna give them a lot of trouble. So if they're able to use their skill to create space and then move the puck with that space, they're gonna do really well. Remember Husak on the power play here. Puck goes up to Bryceland, his shot deflected, and that'll go all the length down the way of the ice. But, um, you know, I still think it's good for some of these, these younger guys. I mean, this, this Milbert team has, I mean, 12 seniors, 11 that are graduating, so there are a lot of old guys. So it's good for, you know, these games where you can get a, uh, some, some younger players out on the ice, um, some players that don't play as much uh, normally out on the ice. As it looks like Melbourne will go on five on three here with Ryan D'Souza taking a slashing call with just over a minute left here. Cross-checking. Cross-checking, excuse I me. I totally disagree with that call. That That is a poor call, a little bit of a makeup call by the official. Just, if I mean, D'Souza gave the guy a little shove on the back end, completely clean, and, you know, he gets called for cross-check. That is a poor call, poor officiating makeup call that the referee, I mean, do better, man. <laughs> Souza heated, slammed the door to the penalty box, and uh, Keshner just telling him, you just calm down a little bit. It's okay, Sam Sal just saying, calm down. He's not happy with it. Teammates just telling him to calm down, but... um. Uh, I had something He's else. He's a little riled up yeah. down there. Well, we'll get that one free. So, you know, you win 8 nothing. Uh, oh, yes. Injury update. Uh, John McLaughlin has not been on the bench for this Melbourne hockey team. As he left this game with an injury, uh, we're not sure what. And I don't really remember any specific play where he went down. So hopefully something just minor that took him out of this game. Uh, but we don't see him on the bench now. So uh, maybe a little early, but we have to go three stars of the game. You what know, are we thinking? Uh, I'm going to wait for the, for the play to expire. I don't like to jump the gun. Uh, J.D. Whiting did this to me in the previous broadcast. He made me wait another four seconds as uh, Gabe Vassalo was some nice... Uh, save there and a follow-up save. Fantastic. What a sequence. Oh Fantastic my gosh. Fantastic goal by Gabe Vassallo. Tic-tac-toe saves for Gabe Vassallo. 
as you can hear from the crowd, they are impressed. They are. They're they're liking it. Runan Gibsall, really well liked guy on this on this Milbert team. Um, you know, hasn't seen the ice that much this year, especially with Jake Huberson being that workhorse um, in net, yeah, and then uh, Tyler that. Spokane coming back. Uh, you know, late in the season after injury, and Milbert has an opportunity here. Alex Fraser lost possession of the puck, and Cam Lowe will just slap that one on net. Frazier will dump it in, and uh, that'll be it. That's As all she wrote. Millbrook wins 8 to nothing, a commanding win over Husak. They move back to 500 on the year. They've got to win three of their last four to make the playoffs. Um, but now I guess it isn't premature. Three stars of the game, Charlie. Uh, now I'm going to go, uh, mm, this is a tough one. Uh, two guys that really worked hard all night. I'm going to go number one star, Colin Hennessy. He had a goal and opportunities all night, chances, creating chances for his teammates, played really well. Then number two, I'm going to go DJ Walsh, his line mate. Also had a beautiful breakaway goal and was skating hard all night. And then uh, and third star, I'm going to go... I'm going to go Zach Walsh, simply for that beauty of a pass and a deep play. And, you know, he was, as always... Calm, cool, and collected. He, did, he didn't make any mistakes all night, and I, I really enjoyed watching him tonight. But, you know, kudos to a lot of other guys. Korpinicki could have been on there. Lucy could have been on there. Huggison, too. Huggison, definitely with the pitch shutout. You know, I would have put him up there, but Vasalo closed Vasalo out closed the game. it out, yeah. Um, uh, and congratulations to all the Melbrook seniors, all 12 of them, Ursini, Elliott, Lucy, Korpinicki, Lowe, Huggison, Hennessy, Walsh, Mazzarelli, D'Souza, and... Frazier, and who am I forgetting? I think that's everyone. I think that's everyone. Oh, Walker. Christo Walker. Christo Walker. Congratulations to all of them, and a big shout-out and thank you to them for being Millbrook Mustangs. It's been a joy to watch them all year, and uh, good luck in the next level. I know we got a few more games down the stretch, none that we will be on the call for, but good luck to all those guys. Nonetheless, uh Three periods of action here from Millbrook. Uh, Millbrook beating Husak 8 to nothing on senior night on Pink the Rink. Big win on a big day. Fantastic effort. A lot of energy, a lot of excitement. And that's going to be it for me, Adam Beck, and Charlie Kay. We're signing off. Millbrook 8, Husak 0.